Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and uh, today we're going to talk about how to make a telephone cable. And do you ever see those cables sometimes, you know, they have these little ends here and um, they kind of like break off. Well, I'll break one off for you. You know what happens when these things break off? It's very annoying because when these things break off, you go to plug these into your RJ11 plug and they fall out and it really becomes a hassle. So today we're going to talk about how to repair these types of cable. Now I want to talk to you about a couple of things, okay? So this is used for telephones, um, the older type of telephones. It's also used for modems, if anyone's still using modems, and it's also used for fax machines. Um, so it's an analog device. Now some phones that are out today are um, VoIP uh, devices, some telephones are called Voice over IP, um, and it's, that's IP stands for Internet Protocol. I am not talking about that in this video today. We're going to be talking about the older technology that you find often at your home, sometimes in your business when it comes to fax machines, and again, the modem, <laughs> which I haven't seen in years. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, when you look at this cable, this is called a uh, silver satin cable, and it's flat. Um, obviously, it's not a computer cable. You cannot use this cable for computers. I mean, you can do what you want, but it's going to give you really bad performance for computers. But it's wonderful for telephones, things like that. And, um, you know, you got them at home sometimes, you know, and especially when you lose that darn tab, breaks off, you stick it in, and then just over time it slides out of the jack and as you're talking to someone eh, you lose the call. So today we're going to talk about how to repair these cables. Now again some people use mm, you know regular twisted pair cable that they use for their computers and they put these RJ45 ends on it and that, that's fine that they do that uh, but uh, the silver satin is a lot easier to work with and uh, the flat cable it's a lot easier to crimp. But uh, what we're going to look at today is, let, let me show you the difference between an RJ45. This is an RJ45 on the left. This is an RJ11. It's called an RJ11. Um, it's actually how it's pinned out, you know, how the pins go in that determine what type of RJ it is. So this is used for computers, really old AT&T telephones. No one uses this for telephones anymore, unless, of course, it's voice over IP. Uh, but at any rate, uh, you can see there's a difference um, in these two. There's more conductors in here, you know, more of those gold things, they're conductors, than there is here. Now in this one, this, is, this has four, uh, four conductors, so it's actually a two pair. Uh, in most cases, all you need is one pair uh, with telephones today. Even the digital telephones, that uh, business telephones, all you really need is one pair. Um, when it has uh, two pairs like this, it's called an RJ14. Even though it's the same mod plug, it's the same specifications and all. When it only uses two wires, uh, one pair in the center, the two center ones, then that's called an RJ11. Um, uh, but in this case, this is actually an RJ14. Same principle, don't worry about it. If you have four pins, you have six pins, that's fine. You're always going to at least have two pins because they don't sell them any other way, uh, any smaller than two pins. It would be useless with this piece of plastic. But anyway, make a long story short, the official name of this little plastic thing here is called a six position, six conductor plug. But in this case, this is a six position because it has six positions in there. So let me point them out here. So you have six positions here uh, going across here, even though two are lacking uh, the little uh, uh, connectors in there. So this would be six position, four conductor. And again, all you really need is a six position, two conductor uh, for it to work uh, for 99.9% .9 of devices. So anyway, let's get on with it, right? So we're dealing with this silver satin cord, this telephone cord. Um, it, it looks pretty good. Everything else is working fine. You know, do you want to throw it out? Well, it's up to you. But you can also uh, salvage it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this end off. We're going to put a new end and I'm going to show you how to salvage it. So I figured I would show you some of the tools that we use. 
Um, even though uh, uh, a lot of people say, why do you use scissors in telecom? Oh man, I've been using scissors in telecom since almost the beginning of telecom. These are special scissors, they're hardened steel. They do wonderful things. Platinum Tools, really uh, high quality uh, product. Uh, we sell all their products um, and that's why I wanted to use it today so you get a chance to see uh, the product itself. Well, what's nice about this is it has this little uh, rest there. Okay. This is how you hold them. This is where you put your thumb. You get extra leverage. And this is normally how you would hold telecom scissors. Maybe you have a little bit different style than me. But it's definitely not this way. I mean, you can do it that way, that's fine. But they're not normal scissors, they're held differently. And if you're a splicer, for the phone company, I'm sure you hold it a little differently than I do. But these are great scissors from Platinum Tools. If you're a professional telecom person, you should purchase these. But today, we're going to cut off the end. Ah, it's cut off. Anyway, great tool. You might want to look at it on the website. Next tool we're going to use is also another Platinum Tools uh, product. And um, this is just a, uh, a platinum tool crimper. And this is nice because it's kind of small. It, it can be used in RJ45, can be used for, again, even though it's a misnomer, RJ11. And as you can see, it says six position on there. Let me take it out so you can see what it actually says. It says six position and eight position. That's the official name for these jacks, even though everyone calls it um, something uh, other than that. Nice thing about this, has a nice little locking thing there. So you press down just a little bit, push in on the lock and it opens up. I love that. It's very heavy, it's, it's heavy steel. Um, a nice round thing that fits in your hand. Anyway, that's not why we're not here. Is to discuss this, we're here to um, solve this problem. Okay, so what you do on this cutter is you, you slide your, your damaged end into here and you push down and you pull out and look at those wires nice and neat all those wires that's probably a little more than you need because remember you, you want to make sure that when you push it in that, it, that this portion right here if you can see it is going to squeeze this portion and not here. So this is a little bit too much. So what we're going to do is take our snips, our scissors. We're going to trim it up just a little bit. That should be enough. Maybe a little more. And then what you do is you slide it in. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing it in. It's in all the way. It's centered. Uh, sometimes you can see the actual wire this end. You're going to take your crimper, you're going to push it in the six position one all the way in and I'm putting pressure on this silver satin so I'm pushing it this way, pushing it together here. So not a lot of pressure but you know it's not moving anywhere. Then I'm going to crimp down on it and it's done. It's in there, and it's been crimped. And if you see in here, it's kind of hard to see on the video, uh, but that little tab came down right on, maybe I can bring it up, right on the, the outside shield. That's it, it's pretty easy. And you know what sometimes I see people do? Is they take maybe um, a 25 or a 20 foot cord, they cut them in half and then put two ends on, and now they have two cords. Um, sometimes people want something that's very short. You know when you get a wall phone and you're hanging on the wall there, uh, you want something that's short. It's probably about that big because you don't want a bunch of wire right behind the phone. And in our uh, little uh, video uh, that we're going to make in, uh, uh, shortly, we're also going to show how to hang a wall phone and how the little connection like this works. Now, uh, some people say, uh, well, you know, uh, is the wire go straight in on both sides. If this was two mod plugs, are they going like this or are they going like that? And uh, one is straight through and one is reversed. And today, um, 
polarity doesn't matter that much. And the equipment that's out today and been out for like the last 20 years, it really doesn't matter that much, whether it's reversed or straight through. So it doesn't matter how you put this on, whether you put it on this way or you take the cord and you switch it and put it on the other way. And it used to be that you had a polarity issue, especially in business telephones. I think in old phones at your house, it used to be that way too. But you had a polarity issue, so you had to do it exactly right. It had to be straight through if that's what the manufacturer called for, or it had to be reversed. And some of the really old business systems used all six pins in there. They would use uh, the outer two pins as uh, power, um, uh, the next two pins, um, and again, the pins go like this, so, so they just spread out, you know, each pair goes wider and wider. So the second uh, pair in the, in the bundle uh, would be for data, you know, saying what type, uh, what day it is on your LCD screen, things like that, um, you know, transferring calls, things like that. And in the center pair would be your voice. Uh, well, now, like with the Toshiba telephone system, their digital system that they've had out for years also, it's just, you only need one pair. You only need the center pins. Now remember, RJ11, all you need is the center pins. And they didn't care whether it was um, uh, uh, straight through or reverse. It didn't matter uh, with the uh, Toshiba digital phone system. It, just those two pairs would run data. It would also run power and it would also run voice and it did it flawlessly. Really worked well. Data phones or um, digital phones really work well. Um, and again, even though they say digital, they're, they're not the same as voice over internet protocol or voice over IP or, or VoIP. Um, the that technology is totally different. It's not uh, this. It uses the eight position jack, which is quite different. Um, thank you for watching uh, the video today. Um, the next thing, uh, another video that we're going to produce right after this one is how to wire a jack. Uh, these things are not very expensive, these ends, so if you want to go around and save all your cords or you can just buy inexpensive new ones. Um, you know, they're pretty pretty inexpensive, being cheaper and cheaper over the years like the rest of communications and computer system parts. Uh, this tool is great. Again, it has that little locking and unlocking device, so it keeps it small in your toolbox or your tool bag or wherever you put it. It's high, I, I cannot believe how high quality. This is not cheap. Um, uh, this is a high quality, inexpensive uh, tool. And this is really nice, I just love it. And you should have it in your toolbox if you're a telecom person. Um, again, this is Jim Gibson with Cablesupply.com. Please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube and you'll get all our latest announcements on the videos we put out. Thank you. Hi, this is Jim with Cablesupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from Cablesupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with Cablesupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet.